Hello Year 6. Lovely to see you again, the people who are in school and the people who are learning at home. I don't know about you, but I just can't wait to get back into the classroom and start teaching properly face to face. But for now, let's concentrate on our key question. Why do Christians celebrate the Eucharist? Now, last week, I saw some fantastic work where people reflected on their own experiences of going over to church, perhaps going to a confirmation service in the cathedral, all really good stuff. Today, we're going to be looking at one of those special key words that we've got just next to me here. We're going to be thinking definitely about the Eucharist, Holy Communion, Last Supper. We're also going to be thinking about the word sacrifice. So let's take a look. What is sacrifice? I've got three images here. Take a moment, have a look at them closely. I wonder what you think is going on in each of these words. Do they help us to understand what is a sacrifice? You may pause the video and discuss together in class what you think's happen in the pictures. Yes, so the first picture, yeah, that's somebody who's giving up their seat for somebody else. Down on the bottom left, we've got somebody who's taking time out of their day to prepare a meal for somebody else. And we've got the famous Sir Captain Tom, who we know a great personal sacrifice spent a great deal of time doing 100 laps of his garden before his 100th birthday. So what is a sacrifice? Let's look at the definition. So a sacrifice is giving up something of value and or doing selfless good deeds for others. I wonder what sacrifices you can think about. And I wonder how does sacrifice connect to learning about the Eucharist? So think about the sacrifices that maybe you could make. Perhaps instead of getting a new computer game or something else of value that you want, maybe you'll give some of that money to charity. I remember a past pupil of ours whose parent still works in our school and this person decided that he really did have enough money in his account and when his birthday came around he decided that he was going to donate his birthday money to charity and when his birthday came around that is exactly what he did. What a tremendous sacrifice to give up his own money that he could have used to buy an iPad, he could have bought computer games, clothes, whatever it was he chose. But instead, he donated that money to other people. And in fact, this same person does that with every one of his birthdays. All of his money goes off to charity. What a remarkable sacrifice. A simpler sacrifice might be just to give your seat on a bus to an old lady. Who knows? Have a think, maybe a discussion. Can you think of a sacrifice you would be prepared to give up for somebody else? Moving on, having a meal with someone is an important sign of friendship. Jesus often shared meals with his disciples, but it's in the Last Supper that we as Christians remember the service called Holy Communion. So remember, it sounds as though I've jumped on talking about the Last Supper and Holy Communion. But remember, we're looking for a connection between sacrifice and the Eucharist. So the service is known as sometimes called the Eucharist, sometimes called Mass and maybe called the Lord's Supper. At the Last Supper, I wonder what it was that Jesus said about his body and his blood. Here you can see a link. Now the video is a little bit dated, but it is useful for you to watch. And when you're looking at it, I want you to listen out really carefully for what Jesus said about his body and his blood. Good time to pause the video. 
So I hope you enjoyed watching that video and you found it useful. So going back to our question, what did Jesus say to his disciples at the Last Supper? Well, Jesus broke bread and gave red wine to the 12 disciples and said, do this in remembrance of me. So as Christians, each time we go to communion, we are reenacting this Last Supper event. We're remembering exactly what Jesus asked us to do as Christians, to do this in remembrance of him. So why do you think communion is so important? So why is communion so important to Christians? Let's have a look together at a few of the ideas. To remember Jesus' sacrifice on the cross when he died to save us from our sins. To remember Jesus' request as told in the Bible. And to share an important experience with other people who believe in Jesus Christ. Because think about it, we really do enjoy sharing a meal with family and friends. I'd like to tell you a quick story now. And it's a story that's really touched me. It's a true story. It happened in the 1990s when there was an area of Europe which was in having really difficult time of conflict. So in a small village near Sarajevo, mortar bombs hit an orphanage part of the war. Three aid workers were killed and several children there were seriously injured. One was a 10 year old girl. There was no medical help available. There was just a doctor and a nurse who arrived from a neighbouring village, but they had very little with them, just a little bit of a medical kit. Now, this little girl was the most seriously injured and without quick action, she died because she was losing so much blood. A young boy who was also one of the orphans agreed to give a donation of his blood. The young boy was called Serge. He lay stiff and silent as the needle was inserted into his arm and the blood transfusion began. After a little while, he gave a sob, then another and then another. And finally, he cried silently with his eyes tightly shut and his fist in his mouth to stifle the sobs. The medical team who were there, the nurse and the doctor, were really worried and they kept asking Serge, is it hurting? And Serge shook his head, but he went on crying. Just then, a Bosnian nurse arrived and she spoke to the young boy in his own language and she listened to his reply. And she carried on talking to him gently and he, eventually he stopped crying and he looked at her first in wonder and then in relief. At this point, the nurse said to the medical team, he thought that you'd asked him to give all of his blood so the little girl could live. Why would he be willing to do that? Asked the doctor. The nurse repeated the question to the little boy. She's my friend, he said. What an amazing sacrifice that young boy was prepared to make for his friend. Woohoo, it's task time now. And today we're going to be doing some hot seating, but this time you're going to be doing it at home or in school on your own. And your specialist subject is going to be the Eucharist and sacrifice. So what I'd like you to do is Imagine that you are sat on the hot seat and somebody is asking you questions. So I'd like you to tell me in a few sentences why Christians celebrate the Eucharist. Next question. Sir Captain Tom is famous throughout the world for his amazing efforts. Give three more examples of people who have made personal sacrifices. What Christian values can you spot in their stories? Now, I've only given you a few lines here. So by all means, use the back of the sheet, use your RE book, or if you can't print at home, don't worry about it at all. You can find a bit of paper and write on there. 
you might be so inspired that you want to find out, find even more examples. That would be wonderful. I'd love to see them. And finally, I want you to have a little think about a sacrifice that you've made or you're prepared to make, even a sacrifice that you know somebody in your family or somebody close to you has made. Can't wait to see them. If you're struggling, I want you to have a think about this. People make sacrifices in different ways throughout their lives and often sacrifice and love go together. There's lots and lots of stories in the media at the moment about people who've gone the extra mile through this COVID-19 period. Um, the people in the picture down here, they're care home workers and because they were concerned about coronavirus affecting the people in their care home, they decided that they were going to leave their homes and camp out on the floors and in tents in their care home. They didn't go back to see their families for weeks and weeks and weeks. They were prepared, they cared so much for the people that they worked with that they were prepared to do that. Malala, I think we're very familiar with Malala's story and what she sacrificed for girls' education. And the guy down here in the red circle, that man is a firefighter and in his ordinary daily life, he was working when the Grenfell fire disaster happened. If you can just recall, that was a tower block in London five years ago that burst into flames and because of the cladding on the outside of the building, the, the fire shot through the rest of the building. This guy, whose name was Liam Whitley, he kept returning into the burning building because he and he put his life in danger, seriously in danger, to rescue the people that were inside that burning building. So finally, whose story of great sacrifice inspires you? Can't wait to hear. Can't wait to see you back in the classroom. Really looking forward to seeing you. Take care, everybody. Enjoy your last week at home or your last week in a bubble in school and we'll see you very soon. Bye.